Hi, welcome to the next of our series of mini lectures as we learn geometrical optics by learning how to design a zoom lens. Um, we've gotten pretty far and we're starting to get into really uh, some different mathematical ways of treating light and really how to do calculations we need. Uh, we've come up with conceptual behaviors, we've looked at lenses, and we're still here looking at what a zoom lens does in terms of the mathematical model. And so far we've studied polynomials and also looked at uh, ray tracing programs that allow us to do exact calculations. We're going to do another approach today, a matrix-oriented approach, uh, that helps us understand how, how optical systems work. And this approach is actually very widely used in understanding optical systems. It's very powerful. And if you take the lasers course here, you'll see this come up again. And it's used in many different types of applications beyond just what we're doing. So let's go ahead and see what we're doing here. Uh, we understand so far our imaging system by having points of light or points that emit rays of light on an object plane. Um, and they go through some sort of imaging system, here a lens, and meet again on an image plane. And if we know the focal length f of our lens, at least for a simple system, uh, we can calculate the where the image plane is, the distance si, uh, knowing the object plane distance and the focal length of the lens, and we've done a lot with these various types of polynomial expressions. However, this really doesn't tell us anything except where the rays of light meet up again on the image plane. And there is another way to think about optical systems as shown here in the figure below. Um, here we think of a single ray of light entering an optical system, and the optical system in this case has an input plane and an output plane, and we treat this optical system like a black box. Uh, we don't know what's going on inside. Uh, we just care about what comes in and what goes out. And to basically draw an analogy between this optical system and the, the lens imaging system shown above, uh, this optical system consists of a length of space, SO, a lens, F, and a length of space, SI. And the object plane, in this case, is the input plane, and the image plane is the output plane. That's how you would sort of think about some of the things we've talked about already in terms of an optical system or a black box optical system. And what we have coming in to our optical system is a ray of light. Uh, we say that this ray of light is determined by two parameters. The distance, it hits above or below the optical axis, and we term that R sub n, as I've just drawn right there. If R sub n is positive, it hits above the optical axis. If it's a negative number, it hits below. And that says where the ray of light enters. The other thing we need is the slope of light, R n prime, of the ray of light coming in. Uh, here we have, draw an analogy with mathematics, and we know that the slope is just defined by the tangent of the angle. So if this ray of light makes a tangent theta with the angle is shown right there, uh, the slope coming in is tangent of theta. And if we define a input position, an input slope of a ray of light coming into an optical system, the ray matrix approach that we'll be talking about tells us what the ray of light does at the output plane. In other words, it gives us the output position, our out, and it gives us the slope of the ray coming out using a matrix approach. Let's take a look add another ray of light coming into the system here. Let me go ahead and grab a red pen so we can keep things straight. Here the slope is obviously negative. The angle theta would be negative and be defined like that. So tangent of theta is a negative number. Uh, the input position is 0. So R in is equal to 0. R prime in is less than 0 since it's a negative number. Um, the ray of light coming out has R out equals 0 since it's hitting on the optical axis and a slight positive slope R prime out. And again, what we're doing is we're defining a single ray of light coming into an optical system and calculating the position and the slope of the ray of light that comes out of the optical system afterwards. We specify this optical system with a matrix, but this tells us nothing except what's happening at the output plane when we define a ray coming at the input plane. We don't know what's happening inside the optical system. 
So let's compare this with what we've already done, the Newtonian or Gaussian optics approach, uh, where we have a object plane and image ray. Image plane tells us where every single ray that starts from an object, object point will meet again to form an image. It's a massively parallel approach. Every single ray of light from some point will meet at this particular plane and form an image. But this approach tells us nothing about what rays are doing at points in the system that are not an object or image point. We really can't determine at all what our rays of light are doing unless they are at the object or image plane. And this, this approach we've been using is very useful for calculating image positions and magnifications in the paraxial limit uh, where we really want to talk about images. Ray matrices, on the other hand, uh, tell the position and slope of a single ray at any single output plane of a system, as long as we can define the system. And we'll see how to do that in a couple of minutes. And this is a highly serial approach. If we want to know what a lot of rays are doing, we need to run each of them through the system individually. Um, but it gives us a lot more power to know what the rays are doing at any point in the system by defining our system matrix for what we want to look at. And the ray matrix approach, it turns out, because it's serial, and you can do this in a, fair, uh, a lot of in incremental and simple calculations, is very well suited to using computers. So let's take a look at this. We have an optical system that we've defined, and we have an input plane and an output plane for that optical system. We have an input position, R in, right there, and we have an input slope defined by the tangent of this angle theta. Um, let's say, for example, that this optical system consists of two lenses and three lengths of space. In order to do this in the matrix approach, we need to find the matrix for each of these elements that comprise the optical system. So what I've done is I've taken this optical system right here and I've expanded it out and shown you what's inside it here. And we want to write a single matrix for the system. Well, we can look up in our book the matrix for space, matrix M1. And that matrix actually is 1, D1, 0, 1. And you can look that up in any book. The next matrix, M2, corresponds to the lens. We can also look up what that book is, and that's 1, 0, minus 1 over F1, 1. We do the same for matrix N3. M3 corresponding to space D2, the spacing between the lenses. M4 corresponds to the matrix for the lens with focal length F2. And finally, the fifth matrix corresponds to the last bit of space in the system. So this optical system, consisting of two lenses with three lengths of free space between them, is a five matrix system. And we're going to take these five matrices and multiply them together to get a single two by two matrix called an ABCD matrix for our optical system. And in order to do this, and this is one of the few things that's tricky about this approach, the system matrix is the matrices multiplied in reverse order. Notice the first matrix is the last one in our physical system. And there's a simple reason for this. It's because the output position and output slope are given by the matrix times a vector consisting of the input position and the input slope over here. And in order to make the matrix multiplication work out, the last matrix has to be the first one the rays hit. So because the rays come in over here and are acted upon by matrix M1 first, that has to be the last one here that they see. And that's the only really trick to doing this. And matrix multiplication is fairly straightforward. You've studied it in a linear algebra course. And we can build up matrices of any complexity using this approach. And again, these are called ABCD matrices. And this is the ray matrix approach dealing with optics. It works for individual rays. So let's go on and do an example and maybe clarify things.